Welcome to another edition of Autograph. And uh, like we always do, we bring you the lifestyles of your favorite people. Today, I have with me a very interesting personality. By profession, he's a reproductive endocrinologist. But there's so much to his life, you'd be so amazed. And I'm wondering if we could be able to do that in over one hour. Well, let's see if we're able to do that. But thank you very much for staying with us here on the Joy Prime channel on Multi TV. My name is Nathaniel Atto. And as we always do, we'll be asking all of those questions that you'd normally not be able to ask them when you see them in town or when you're sharing their company. would like to say thank you to Royal Dennis for my outfit and uh, thank all of you once again for staying right there. So we begin the interview very shortly, but this man is a proud product of Maoli Secondary School or Maoli Senior High School as it's now known in the Volta region, hold to be precise. He's also a product of the University of Ghana, Lagon and King's College in London fine personality with so much to tell about what he does away from the consulting room. Stay with us. Thank you very much for staying here and this is Autograph where we take a closer look at your favorite people. Today I'm sharing the good company of someone I've always known as an obstetrician gynecologist, uh, one time uh, deputy medical director at the police hospital. After his career there and after his stint there, he set up the Lister Hospital, which has now become, uh, well, arguably the biggest private hospital we have in the country at the moment. He's done so much for people when it comes to his profession, but has another side to his life that you'll be, you'll be glad to know of. Dr. Edem Kujohiaji is my guest today. Thank you very much, Doc. Thank you. The, the last time I was in your home, uh, we're here, uh, you know, enjoying uh, at a party, and we, we drank a lot of champagne, which is one of your favorite beverages. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, let, me, let me do a bit of layman talk here. Um, I've always known you as a gynecologist, but then it's qualified uh, to say you're a reproductive endocrinologist. Uh, what does that mean? Okay, that means despite looking after women across board from the slightest complaint of uh, maybe a vaginal discharge to having cancer of the uterus or whatever, I further specialized into the process of helping people have children. Okay. I see. That's, so that's basically that, that's it. That's basically what oh. a reproductive endocrinologist means. You go into the details of finding out why people are unable to have children and help them through that. Mm. And you've done this so well over, over the decades, but let's also focus on your life away from the consulting room. Um, there's so much to it. And you're somebody who loves a lot of things. Um, you're very spiritual. You like to do... Um, a lot of retreats, quiet retreats, away from everybody else. Tell us why. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think you've been praying to my private life without <laughs> letting me know. But, yeah. Um, the consulting room takes a lot of my, my being uh, in that the workload of work um, with women your life is practically sold out. The, so long as you would be in the hospital, there would be people waiting to see you. And um, this has gone over the period uh, to the extent where you find that you're trying to make time um, for other things. Uh, talking about uh, wanting to do retreats and the rest, yes, it is true, I do retreats, because I realize that making time for your God is very important when you're busy. And um, on a daily basis, there's very little you can do. You take a devotional in a few minutes, few minutes yeah. you're, you're done, and, uh, and that's it. And it's just people, 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 right through. And when you're getting home, it's late, you're tired. You take the devotional, you read 
three lines and you're feeling sleepy and uh, and then you go so over the period I realized how shallow I was with that and so I decided to give more time and depth to my um, uh, my my time with my maker um, I tried it at home but there's so many uh, interruptions um, even though I don't have patients coming home um, which is something I've managed to, to, to cut out to cut out over the, <laughs> over the years because I have so much time for them in the hospital I realized that um, the children uh, bump in now and again or, or there is a, a phone call that you have to address or you even remember something that you wanted to do and, and you find you're, you're tracking for that so when I do my retreats it's nothing but myself and the will I call the Bible the will because that is the will God left us through Jesus before mm -hmm. um, leaving and um, and so I devote my time purely for that and um, soak myself in it and without any distractions no phone calls nothing and you find that over time uh, I've realized that a lot of what we go to church and is said you listen to it then you come out and you forget uh, you, and, and you don't join it to another aspect of the Bible or in the reality of what happens um, becomes more realistic as you spend time with your God. Um, incidentally, over the period, I've had to assume other responsibilities in that vein. Uh, I'm currently the um, the CEO. Uh, for the Men of Honor group. This I is, see. This is um, a non-denominational uh, NGO uh, who have the business of setting up corporate chaplaincy centers. I see. Uh, this is a group that was started by a few businessmen uh, a few years ago, I think about 14 years ago and it's just been among them until four years ago they decided to go uh, public meaning I see. get more people involved uh, I was invited to the first eminent persons conference uh, at La Pleasure Beach and um, I was actually taken off my grounds to find business people who I knew and looked up to uh, who were very committed to their, to their, their God, to their faith. Yeah. And um, to cut a long story short, their main business is helping business people understand that there is nothing like God separate and business separate you bring God into your business and almost everything about business is in the Bible you can actually track it to somewhere in the Bible anything that you're doing in business is in there mm. and uh, it's it's amazing how um, over the period we've been able to open chaplaincy centers in in a few businesses to help people understand that you use God all the way from planning your business to actually starting the business to recruiting people you you use God in there and, and probably growing it yeah, yeah. growing mm. your business and it's very evident in what we see at Lister well by his <laughs> grace. let's talk about uh, yeah. you know other things including traveling you've you've lived some of your life away from Ghana you've yeah. you've lived in the UK for about five years continuous okay. and um, you like to travel a lot yeah, I do. Why, I do. why that particular craze? What's okay. Um, the main bulk of my time in the UK was in Scotland, where I did my postgraduate training in obstetrics and gynecology in Glasgow at the Queen Mother's Hospital. Um, 
it was a teaching hospital with very high-end uh, level of um, medical practice. It had a fetal medicine unit, which means that uh, apart from being a, a, a center for training gynecologists, yeah. they also trained people who looked after the baby in the womb. Mm. Uh, to, 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 to give you an example, um, this was one of the places where babies were transfused in their mother's abdomen before they were born. Uh, I've de I delivered babies who were transfused five times in their mother's abdomen wow. before they were born. Because there is a condition called rhesus incompatibility. Uh, and when you have rhesus disease, um, this is normally to women who are rhesus negative. When they say blood group O negative, A negative, sure. those are rhesus negative. The, the negative size are the rhesus factor. And the man is a positive. Because the baby could be positive, it means this mother has both positive blood and negative blood in her system. And uh, when a little bit of her blood goes into the baby's blood, she, it produces antibodies in the mother. And then this goes and breaks down the cells of these babies. So before this technique was developed, anybody who was racist negative and was married to a racist positive, positive man was never able to get a baby born at nine months. Maybe the first time they may achieve that because the transfer of the cells hadn't taken place yet. But subsequently, they lose all the babies because the baby's blood is broken down in the womb and they become anemic and, and die. I see. So I see. they found a technique of um, getting into the, the womb, uh, getting into the cord of the baby, taking blood, checking the blood level, transfusing this baby, uh, wow. observing for a while in the go. So that was very interesting. Now, I realized after that training that apart from the high end, like what I've just spoken about, there were so many things that could be done back home to raise the standard of uh, practice of, of medicine, and in particular obstetrics and gynecology. So when I passed my exams, I never felt I wanted to stay back there. There was this That's year. That's very interesting, Doc, because, you know, it's, um, it's quite a big challenge for mm -hmm. a lot of people who have lived out there in the developed world. Some people go out there and the bias says, look, I want to stay there. I don't want to return here yeah. with all of the troubles. And it was so easy for you to just want to come back home. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. This, it's because the, the determination was there. And, and, and I felt there was the possibility of, of, um, of setting up something which you could bring up the standards. Sure. Um, let me uh, reveal this. Um, I may say it was a little bit easy for me because uh, both of my parents had brothers who were doctors. I see. And were in this country. I see. Um, my daddy's brother was... Uh, and your dad is 91, still alive. <laughs> yeah. Strong man. The last <laughs> time I met him, he gave me a history lesson. <laughs> By his grace. Um, sure. My daddy's brother was uh, the late Professor um, Josiah Hiaji, who was a professor of surgery in, in Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital, I who see. was one of the people who helped in setting up the medical school in, in Konfuanochi, uh, who gave me a lot of inspiration in, into going in uh, the academic so sector. The, so it means that the factors were many. Yeah, the factors yeah, in wanting to yeah. come home were many. And then secondly, my mother's brother is the late Dr. Nyaho Tamaklo, who set up Nyaho ah, Medical Center. Interesting. Yeah. I and, see. And, and during medical school, I spent a lot of time with these two. Anytime I jump on, close down the university because um, we were on demonstration or whatever. Mm. And so the inspiration... <laughs> talk about, talk about, talk about the university. Yeah. What kind of student were you? I mean, what kind of individual were you yeah. back on the campus in Lagon? Back on the campus in Lagon. I, was, I mean, I know you're a very fun-loving person. Yeah, you like yeah. to do well, your, I had, I had You a make lot time of fun. for your extracurricular yeah. activity yeah. as well. I had a lot of fun uh, in the medical school. Um, no, no two ways about that. Um, 
um, the course itself was very, very stressful. And so you need to have an escape route. Um, <laughs> and because there wasn't much time, then you had to have good fun within the short period you could. And, and you're a very good dancer as well. Well, um, practice makes perfect. I had a lot of dancing as a I, student. I see. Um, so you had the opportunity to, within an evening, go to a party, go to a disco, go to all that. But I always say there's time for everything. Um, I don't have too much of that now, but I don't yearn for it either. Because, because I, you've seen I all enough. of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see. So, did you have... Did you, did you have any um, terms back in the day for the dance moves? I know, I know it was... It's uh, what do you mean by terms? Terms for the dance moves, the dances. You, you had names for them? Oh, yeah, definitely. There were, there were all the, the various dances. And when, when they come up, mm. you need to practice and make sure when you go out there, uh, you are um, uh, up to date, uh, not, not, not a cake. I see. Um, I also realized that you, you, you have this passion for jazz. Yeah. And, um, I've, always, I've always loved jazz. Mm -hmm. um, but that comes from my uh, late uncle, uh, the one, the professor of surgery. Okay. Uh, he, was, he trained in, in Hamburg. Okay. And um, one of the things he did very early was to send my dad um, a reel to reel. Um, I see. <laughs> you don't see those things these days. Nowadays, That's, uh, sure. Uh, it's like a tape recorder, but it's on a reel, and so you could record and uh, and, uh, and and play back. Yeah. I see. So very early uh, in secondary school, we could we could do recordings, and and he was very much for jazz. So if he sent stuff to my dad, it, it was mostly jazz. And the time I spent with him in Kumasi was where my jazz interest actually uh, built up i see now I, I i you know inside your home in your you know your living area your second living area there are two pictures of uh, some jazz oh. letters are they your favorites <laughs> um well two of my favorites there was uh, bb king is more into blues but he plays some jazz as well and i actually watched him live uh, in, in in scotland uh, that was one of the things I did uh, in, in Scotland. I would travel to see real live jazz shows. It's, it makes a big difference uh, when you see the people whose CDs or tapes or uh, albums sure. you know, sure. that, that you played and, and see them real. So I, I, I used to travel from uh, Glasgow to Edinburgh to Birmingham to, and, and the rest. And I could go all the way to Birmingham just to go to Ronnie Scott's, which is a jazz club, um, and, and, and have a good weekend jazz session. Um, Through all of this, did you ever learn how to play any instrument? Unfortunately not. Um, I love the vibraphone. Uh, I always say if I had the opportunity, that is what I would learn, because I'm amazed at how one just holds these two um, uh, what would I call them? Rots. They should have a right name. Okay. And 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 just go across, but play clear music. It's like the xylophone sure. or the marimba, as it's called. But I I I would love if I get the opportunity to play that. Yeah. But well, um, that's one. The saxophone I like very much, and the piano I enjoy very much. Yeah. I see. Um, so even when I go gospel, I still love. Jazz gospels. Uh, I, I started collecting them you very must have early. A, you, we must have a very big collection oh, of I those. I do, I do, uh, and and never get tired of playing them. Um, wow. The thing about jazz is, um, it's over. It's ever so, so fresh, so new. Just leave them a little bit, and go back for it, and uh, it wakes up parts of your body that have been lying wow. dormant. How um, how often do you play jazz or listen to? You know, that genre of music. Huh. Every day. Wow. It's in my car uh, and, and uh, in my office. Um, it's either jazz or gospel that I play. Um, I and um, uh, It, it must do that, a lot to, to settle you yeah, as, a, yeah, as yeah. A, your, a whole, your whole being and mm -hmm. everything. 
Yeah, um, it's 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 good. It's, it's good music. It it, it keeps you focus uh, on on what you want to do, and um, jazz in particular uh, demands a lot of input. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of music is uh, now computerized, and you just press a few things and all you do is talk or rhyme. Does any, other, does any other genre of music attract your interest? I mean, we're here in Ghana, there are so many developed, you know, styles. High Life has been there ever since. Oh, There's, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, that one after, several generations after you called yeah. Hip Life as well. <laughs> has any of them caught your attention so far? Um, not as much as before. Uh, Unfortunately, something about uh, my appreciation of music has got to do with how much has gone into, into it. it. When I think people have a, um, a shortcut of coming out with something that did not have a lot of input, uh, it doesn't turn me on that much, unfortunately. I see. So, um, the, the same with 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 cartoons when when i was young yeah uh, tom and jerry and uh, oh yeah, I, pink I, panther I, I what, still, what, why tom and jerry and pink panther i still will have a good session with my kids having a good laughter at that uh I have a few adult friends who like tom and jerry and we could watch it uh, some of them even know when it's coming on <laughs> uh, we could watch it and have a good laugh i see B because it never grows old um sure. that um youthfulness in you is dead till you grow old and till you die. I'm just so, loving this conversation. Um, and uh, if you just joined us here on Autograph, I'm in the good company of Dr. Edem Kojohiaji, the CEO, medical director of Lister Hospital here in Accra. So uh, he's spoken about a whole lot of things uh, back in the days when he was training as a medical student and how he's made time to just uh, communicate with his maker. He's also spoken about his passion for jazz and quality music. I'm talking about live music and his passion as well for certain specific instruments. There's more to talk about. He loves to travel, and uh, he has a special language that he developed with his uh, you know, inner <laughs> circle of friends. We'll talk about all of that when we return. Thank you for staying with us here on Autograph, where we bring you your favorite people. Here with me is uh, Dr. Adam Kujuhiaji, the uh, CEO of Lester Hospital in Accra. Um, I'd like to say thank you once again to Royal Dennis for making me look good if you think I'm looking good. Uh, gorgeous by Royal Dennis. Thank you very much. Doc, um, we were talking about, you know, music and, and your, your appreciation for music. And... Um, it just would lead me back to, because you talked about youthfulness and, you know, mm -hmm. your youthful days. Um, school, the fact that you loved, you loved to have fun made you very in tune with time and, you know, what was going on. You were the guy about town uh, back in school, weren't you? You could say so. Mm. <laughs> I see. And you, you managed to balance it very well with your studies. It didn't, never, you know... I think it was God's grace, because... Uh, um, the one thing I made sure about was not to miss any lectures. Okay. And you or, never missed any because yeah, of... Any lectures or yeah. any um, tutorials or clinical sessions. I see. Because there's no better way than to hear it from the professor himself. Mm. But then I must say that I didn't go back and just sat by the book for the rest of the day. We needed to have unwind some youthful and have fun. fan. Yeah. And you, you look very good. I mean, I mean, you've seen a couple of decades of life. You look very good. Um, you've yeah, played squash be before. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd been, I'd been uh, an avid squash and tennis player. I'd play tennis from 4 to 6 and wow. top it up with squash till 8 p.m. Yeah. on a regular basis until uh, workload when I was at the police hospital, was getting the better part of me. I so I would have my partners waiting on the court for, for and hours never and never made it. <laughs> so I see. <laughs> eventually I decided to get partners who would always be there. So I, I switched to the gym. I see. Um, 
and uh, would, would, did the gym three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, uh, and uh, no, Wednesdays, Fridays, and, and uh, Sunday. It, it, sure, it sure has worked because I, we maintain but that you, you in, still... Interestingly yeah. enough, um, I haven't been able to do that very well because mm. uh, uh, I injured my shoulder about five and a half years ago. What during, happened? During the fifth anniversary of Lista, we were playing some football competition okay. with Nyaho and the West African Rescue and I fell and injured my shoulder. I didn't know it was that Pretty serious. serious. Yeah. I see. So I'd go back to the gym and, and work it out some more. I <laughs> not knowing it, it, it was getting worse. worse. I see. Uh, eventually, um, I was realized I had torn some ligaments and um, uh, had to have it repaired. Fortunately, that was done uh, arthroscopically by keyhole surgery. So it's, it's fine. In fact, the last time I met the surgeon, I told him, this shoulder was now better than the other. The one. other, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But since yeah. then, uh, I had a long spell out of the gym. I've resumed now, but um, hadn't been like before. I see. Yeah. You know, um, I was I was talking about good looks because there's always something with, you know, being in tune with time, having your fun, and you know, being up and about, especially when you're mm -hmm, a student. Mm -hmm. um, you, you must have attracted a lot of good female company back in the day when you were younger. Mm, do you want to go on that line? Uh, I think um, um, you try to hold yourself back a bit and have mm. a balance. Uh, you were the ladies' man back then? Mm, I wouldn't say so. There were many ladies' men. <laughs> 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 yeah, but um, you, 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 you try to have a, a good balance and, and not stray too much. Um, uh, otherwise, you could you could land yourself in in trouble. Mm. Uh, so I I would say um, I managed to comport myself within the limits yeah, <laughs> that are allowed. <laughs> uh, and talk about that. Yeah. I mean, you're married. You've got five uh, lovely children. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, your your eldest daughter told your line. She's a medical doctor now. Yes. Um, I know that back in the day when she was studying in school, uh, she had the passion for information technology. Are you the kind of dad who, you know, would put a little bit of subtle pressure? Okay, you no, know something, no. I, think, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. No, no. Um, to, to tell the truth, you're the first person telling me he was, she was keen on information technology. Okay. It, she may have loved that as yeah. well. Um, Rushi... Um, loves to explore and um, very early she decided that she wanted to do um, medicine I, see. I didn't have to push her at all and why would do you, I, would you, why would do you I say been, so yeah. um, because it is a very very involving uh, profession um, if you don't love medicine it will be a chore for you to be able to do it with the kind of passion that is required to do it, uh, you'd be a bad doctor. Let's put it that way, I see. because um, I look forward to going to the hospital. The way I look at medicine is, and 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 very early, when a patient comes to you, and you ask, "How do I help you?" and they tell you what their, their problem. problem is. It means you're prepared to carry that problem, to sure. find out why it's there, and see how you can help to, to ameliorate it, to, to sort it out. Um, and if you wouldn't do that, you would just scratch the surface. Um, so I see many people who have been pushed into medicine, and I know many people who finished medical school, and have rolled up their certificates and put it somewhere else. And are pursuing and are doing other, other things. things. Sure. Because that was not what they should have done um, in the first place. Um, there was this generation, and I think probably if it didn't exist before now, I'm not sure it may be as strong before when it was like medical or suicide. I mean, uh, in those days, once you were good academically, you should be a doctor or um, a lawyer or an engineer or architect or something um, because those days, those were the only um, form of 
uh, professions that were looked up to apart from the priests in the town yeah. and, and the chief. Um, but that's all changed. Uh, uh, those days, it was um, a prestigious um, profession that uh, even if the salary wasn't very good, uh, in the little town, though, you, so many people will come and give you're, you... You're more or less like the king. And things, yes, <laughs> and, and you were okay with it. And you, you could get around... Uh, with so much and mm. and uh, but, 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 but yeah. things have changed yeah you 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 must be proud that at least uh, one of your five children has pursued uh you know that your line, line yeah. you know oh yes you know. i am i am and very how proud. how disappointed would you have been even though yeah. you're not you, applying any yeah. pressure as a father as a father that that probably well, all the five wouldn't have none of them would none have of wanted them would have been uh that would have been sad oh. uh that would have been sad particularly because apart from <clears throat> wanting to be a doctor, I also wanted to set up um, a hospital with a certain uh, uh, degree of quality, uh, of quality uh, and service delivery. Um, because I also know of a lot of places where um, people have put in their effort uh, in certain things. And if there is no... Uh, succession plan uh, once they're gone that's it and uh, nobody else is interested in in pursuing the vision that you had uh, when when you started this this project so in a way it's fine it it, it, it worked well for me but even then I was never going to force her into it because then she wouldn't do it well and that would rather be the, a disappointment uh, but she is uh, probably even more passionate than I am. I mean, when uh, she immediately finished school and decided that she was going to die in Quanta, where I haven't even been before, uh, <laughs> because she had a month and she wanted to, to get her hands into work, I, I, I was scared for her, uh, whether she could survive, because um, they didn't have the rough, uh, well, I wouldn't think my dad would be happy to hear that I had a rough, <laughs> rough beginning. But theirs was cooler. They were, in, yeah. in, in, they were home till form five. And sure. then I had to push them to SOS to have yeah. a bit of boarding school effect. But those days, if you went to boarding school in class one, the bullying and all that toughened you up. And yeah. then uh, yeah. you continue to invest. Um, and so to find her, wanted to go to a totally strange place. Uh, in fact, I had to let my driver take her halfway down the road because she, she hadn't even been on that route before. I see. But um, she did uh, survive it and, and she's doing well in what she's doing. The beginning was a little yeah, bit rough, sure. but she's finding uh, the, herself more the, the other four, I mean, yeah. from Khadija all the yeah. way down to, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, what are their interests? How, how, how have you related to them over the years? Over the I years, mean, yeah. Mixing the pressures of everyday work yeah. and... Well, uh, I would say that um, we had more time growing up because workload was not that much. Yeah. At least I wasn't really up. I was their home teacher um, and uh, uh, we would do homework together to the point where I would sometimes stop my clinic in the afternoon, go home, do homework and go back. And, f and the patients would wait for me to come back and finish it off. Uh, so... We, 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 we've, we've been very close. Um, Kadi had her university education outside, but I was out there several times to visit and make sure she was doing what she could. Came back, did a master's in Aberdeen. I went to visit her there as well. Uh, she's back now. Uh, I, at this point, I feel sh she hasn't finished. Okay. Um, I'm still trying to talk her into doing Something Some other more. stuff, yeah. I see. Um, but she sometimes sees life differently. I see. Uh, at this stage, you don't put pressure. You try to convince mm. and uh, try to put words of wisdom. Um, because you can see further than they can see now. Sure. So you try and, and, and talk them through that. The, the last two, yeah. um, they are relatively way yeah. younger. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, Sedim, what do you see? Sedim and Susu. Yeah, Sedim and Susu. What, what, what do you see them doing and... What kind of interest do you do see them have? developing at this <laughs> tender age? Uh, well, 
Sedem seems to change now and again. He loves his football. Um, he had his football this morning. Uh, but he's doing fantastically at school in, in everything. Uh, he last time had five achievement awards. Um, um, uh, and he's, he's multi-talented so, for now. So, so, so he came up to you five years from now and mm -hmm. said, Daddy, I want to be a professional footballer. What would you say to that? If, if he has um, the ability, why not? Okay. Uh, years ago, one would say, well, how? But why not? There are many professional footballers who are very comfortable and they are happy with what they've done. Mm. Their span is short, but with good investments, you can continue doing what you love to do. I see. Uh, you, you've, see. You've, you've, um, you, you've, you've gotten yourself involved with a football club before you traveled with a football club. Yeah, once? yeah, yeah. As the club's <laughs> doctor? Yeah. Which club was that? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You've been digging <laughs> deep into my past. Uh, this was the NBC Academy, okay. uh, mining and business uh, uh, construction mm. company. is a company that was owned by an Italian um, uh, in this country. I see. Uh, and um, at the time I bought chairman, uh, Mr. Givio Co was working. Uh, with NBC, okay. so uh, there was um, a tournament in in Europe. In it Denmark, actually, no, in Italy. Italy, okay. Yeah, in Italy, right. uh, we we um, uh, and and there were academies from all over the all world, over from the, the world, US, Japan, uh, Europe, mm. um, especially. And, and, you, and uh, you had to travel with them as the team yeah, doctor. Yeah, I was the team doctor. So mm. I remember. When we were planning for that, I got my sports books and lent a few things and all that. Wow. And, wow. and and it was it was good. It was fun and uh, exciting as well because we, you've we played some of it around. before, haven't you? Um, the football, yeah, but not to that level. I stopped football very early uh, when what position I got were you playing? injured, uh, number ten. Number ten. Yeah. Wow! I got injured <laughs> when we played some older people, and so I decided I was going off. Contact sports. Okay. Do, do uh, you have do you have any any phobia? I mean, of any sort. Nah. Uh, no. Not really. Not you know, really. I asked this one mm. as well. You, you 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 travel around a lot, yeah. and air travel is pretty funny yeah. sometimes. Yeah. No. Have phobia. you had any Have you had any funny experiences? Yeah. You know, uh, mid air like and all that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, a little bit. Slight skids, you know, on the runway and all of that? No skid, no skid. Uh, the only time I would say I was a little bit worried about air travel was when uh, I was with um, a senior colleague of mine. This was okay. in Scotland. I see. He was learning to become a pilot. I see. And he decided to give me a treat. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in this uh, single engine wow. light plane and, you know, you could... Feel yeah, the tossing. Feel the, yeah. yeah, that that was the only time I would say, you know. What what what, what did you say when you gained height, for instance? What what did you say? What were you saying to yourself, especially oh, when gaining the wind height was, wasn't a problem? Okay, but, but the balancing, the balancing. Mm. Yeah, um, I just thought, well, he wouldn't want to die himself, so he would do his <laughs> best. So I prayed to my you, God. Do you remember what happened when you were about to land? Uh. Well, uh, he was, by then, he was conducting himself well. Mm. I could see the, um, the, um, runway, the approaching. runway approaching and uh, he was fairly well balanced. Mm. No As butterflies fact, in your tummy? No, the butterflies were higher up <laughs> when, when we were, <laughs> we were rolling a bit. Yeah, but um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Talk, about, talk about flying around. Yeah. Um, you well, haven't told me most which... Of, yeah. yeah, most of my... Travels are mm. for conferences. Okay. Yes, most of my travels are for conferences. I belong to many international uh, um, uh, professional associations. I see. And uh, and that the conferences are actually the times that I update myself Yourself. on the latest developments. I use that to catch up with what is happening outside. I see. I see. Um, I've always enjoyed my time outside 
uh, how much it brought me up to speed with the latest developments and how we could adapt most of those. There are many things that you might not be able to do locally because it needs lots of other inputs. But there are so many of them too that you can easily incorporate into what you're doing and raise the standards tremendously. I see. And so uh, I don't miss this these conferences. conferences. Now, yeah. um, it surely has given you a very broad scope because it's yeah. given you uh, access to many parts of the world. So yeah. which of them would you say is your favorite travel destination of all of those places? And is there any other part of the world that you desperately want to visit? I haven't done South America yet. Okay. So, um, Where in South America would you prefer to be? If for you... now, for now, I would want to do the new Basilica in Brazil. I see. Um, I saw it and it's amazing. I think it's, it's the biggest in the Have world. Have you seen I've St. Peter's in Italy? Oh, I've been to the Vatican, oh, okay. did my tour um, uh, twice. Uh, in fact, it was during my tournament in, okay. in Italy I that I used uh, one of the days in Rome. I did the Colosseum did, and then did the, uh, the, the, the Vatican. I see. Uh, it was good. And then I did it again uh, Four years ago, this was now on a professional uh, Level. trip too. Yeah, I see. Um, um, but uh, I said uh, I'd been to Australia sure. before and and did Hobart's. Hobart's is beautiful. Um, it's it's a, a small town, but with a very good view. It's it's uh, the coastal part is very hilly, so okay. everybody has a view of the sea. Wow. And uh, you wake up in the morning and the morning sun coming up is so beautiful. And uh, because it's an island as well, um, the, the crime rate is very, very low, low and there are many people who live there and then work on the Australian mainland itself. Uh, on Thursday, they go back to Hobart's for the weekend. And it's, it's amazing. Um, so you'd love to return to Hobart any day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, I, I do have um, uh, a cousin there. Um, doc, my late uncle, Dr. Tamaklu's first daughter, uh, married and had children there. I so, see. So uh, if I have the opportunity, I'd visit again. And of course, yeah. let's talk about winding down as we round up the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, there's something with you and good champagne you love it's one of your favorite beverages yeah what, yeah tell me about your 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 love for good champagne, champagne yes um i don't i'm not one who will indulge in alcohol um just for indulgence sake um like i i need a beer yeah. uh, or i need a a good whiskey um, once in a while where you find yourself somewhere that um, uh, that is you don't have the option you can manage it but um, and, and I don't drink often but when I decide to have something it must be something good it must be a good champagne um, uh, and um, and even then you, you you don't you don't drink to get drunk you drink to appreciate the the, the value or the taste. My palate has been developed to that. So um, I will have my good champagne on a good day. Uh, sometimes, <clears throat> to tell you the truth, there are a few things that as I went along, I gave myself reason to indulge. Um, I didn't start off in Scotland uh, on, a, on a good salary. Because I went as a supernumerary. Sure. At the time I wanted to go, the country wanted to start training its own specialists. So I had already done my exams and I had a position to, to, to go to, but um, they wouldn't sponsor you. So I had to go as a supernumerary, meaning very little to spend. But I wanted my jazz CDs so badly that I told myself... And you also wanted to be watching your live performances. Yeah, I said, well... Um, <laughs> You don't smoke. Yeah. So if you were smoking, you would go into two packets a week. Calculate that. You can buy a CD. So okay. I'd go and buy myself <laughs> a CD for that. The same way I don't just 
get home or close from work and, and sit somewhere and, and drink alcohol. So when is a Friday and I calculate, oh, okay, if I was taking um, uh, three bottles of beer all week, I would have spent this much. I can afford a good bottle of champagne. So I'll give myself uh, and treat a, a, yourself a treat, to it. Yes, uh, <laughs> and, and be happy uh, All right. uh, with that. Doc, yes. um, you know, talk about the last time you and I enjoyed champagne <laughs> here on this lawn. Yeah. Um, it was a party, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of family and friends around. Yeah. And I had a conversation with your father, and that's okay. what I'd want us to round up with. Okay. Your father is 91 and still going. Yes. When he looks at you today, yeah. okay, what are some of the things he tells you? I mean, this is somebody who... I mean, who's brought you up, seen you yeah. at all the stages of your life, mm -hmm. you know. What are some of the kinds of conversations he has with you after all you've been able to achieve all this well? Well, um, I, I know he's uh, happy with what I've achieved and he's also um, praying and hoping that I can do more um, for instance, the second phase expansion project at Lister is one of his prayers to see it come to uh, fruition because um, he was there when we inaugurated uh, Lister in 2004, uh, 11 years ago. And um, he's hopeful uh, that this will be completed in his lifetime as well. <clears throat> um, for now, he hopes that I will be able to support um, his lineage, that means his uh, nieces and nephews, um, that they will also be able to, um, to, to, to find something to do for themselves and, and, and uh, be self-sufficient. Um, help those who need a little support to go uh, for further studies um, or, or need um, uh, just guidance in, in life to be able to be there for, for them as well. Uh, <clears throat> I know that last year uh, at my birthday he uh, got up and said, well, um, he's now 90 and uh, he is head of family and he wants to <laughs> at this presence hand over the mantle to me wow. without discussing it with me earlier wow. but um uh, how did you feel about that well uh, i felt on it um but at the same time felt challenged to uh, be able to sit up and, a heavy and responsibility do that. indeed yeah. Uh, to, to, to do that. Um, so uh, there isn't much disappointment in, uh, in, in, in his life apart from the fact that his soulmate, my mother, passed uh, two and a half years God ago. Bless her soul. Yes. Uh, but they had a, um, a very good life. Uh, we're married for 50 five years or 57 years before uh, my mother passed. So uh, they were really, really close. Um, and um, interestingly, uh, just 10 days to the one year anniversary of my mother, he was kneeling down to pray and slipped and fractured his hip. Wow. So I had to get him down here to Accra and get his hip replacement done. And he wasn't there for the occasion but those are some of the challenges of life you wonder why should somebody be kneeling down to pray and 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 slip and get a fracture yeah uh, those are the ones i go to retreat for to try and understand and commune with my god more get into deeper levels and understand why he has many things happening in our lives he has a purpose uh, our destinies have been set up already before we were born and it is for you to keep yourself as close to him as possible to make sure that you achieve your God-given destiny whilst on this earth.
Well said, Doc. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Um, it's been great sharing your company. Uh, Thank you. Always great having a conversation with you. My guest today on Autograph has been Dr. Edem Kojohiaji, the CEO of Lister Hospital in Accra, giving us a lot of deep you know, insight into a lot of aspects of his life. I trust that uh, the younger people of the younger generation surely are inspired by this gentleman and what he's been able to do for himself and uh, his family and the generations after now uh, carrying the responsibility of a head of family. Doc, once again, we say thank you to you. And thanks You're to welcome. all of you for staying with us over the last hour here on the Joy Prime channel on Multi TV. I say thank you once again to Gorgeous by Royal Dennis for my lovely outfit. I'll be back next week, Sunday, at the same time with more and another very interesting personality. Thank you very much for watching.